the holy grail for immune oncology is figuring out if there's a biomarker. The drugs are expensive, we know that. They have some toxicities, we know that. And they work really well for some people, a little bit for some people, and not at all for others. And so we need to figure out who should get them and who should not. And there are three leading contenders for biomarkers for in, uh, immune oncology checkpoint inhibition. One everybody knows about is PDL1. So do you have the receptor, do you have the ligand present? Um, that's wishy-washy. Some studies say it matters, some studies say it doesn't. We know that microsatellite instability, mismatch repair deficiency, predicts for responsiveness to immune oncology therapy. And so all patients with metastatic disease, not just colon cancer, we need to know their MSI status because even though it's fairly rare in some cancers, the drugs seem to work in those patients. So you have to know that. And the third is something called tumor mutational burden. And the only way you're gonna figure this out is by doing broad next-gen sequencing. How many mutations does that cancer have? And there's pretty good prediction that the more mutations there are, the theory is the more neoantigens that are produced, and therefore the more likely you're to respond to immune oncology. We've studied this. We've looked at the frequencies of this in colon cancer and other diseases and know that almost all mismatch repair deficient MSI patients have high tumor mutational burden. But there are some patients with high tumor mutational burden that aren't mismatch repair deficient or MSI. So they're, if you will, overlapping or crossing Venn diagrams. Um, and PDL1 is actually a third piece of that. So for my money, doing broad next gen sequencing is the way to go because you get both MSI and tumor mutational burden. They're confusing. These are new biomarkers that are not yet really comfortable for us. We do a lot of MSI testing using immunohistochemistry, um, which can be confusing to, to a lot of docs. We're now shifting to actually doing most of this testing using next-gen sequencing, as I said, which will get you both MSI status and tumor mutational burden. We know that right-sided colon cancer is different than left-sided colon cancer. We also do know that when we look across the spectrum that there's different percentages of gene abnormalities. And we know that on the right side, that's where a lot of our MSI tumors are. But that doesn't mean don't check on the left side. It's not exclusive to the right side. It's just more frequent over there. It can happen anywhere throughout the colon. So check all of your colon cancers, whether they're left-sided or right-sided. So MSI testing has a, has a couple of, ram, of important issues. One of them, of course, is determining whether the cancer is a genetically uh, in, informed cancer, and that has relevance to the siblings or the family members of the person who's in your office. So that's important to do, obviously, in young people in particular. And we all know there's been a stunning increase in incidence of colon cancer in young people, which is very, very disconcerting. Uh, the, the real value for MSI testing, of course, is to identify the subset of patients who have the greatest likelihood of benefiting from a checkpoint inhibitor. And because these benef the benefit can be just off the charts, that's why it's imperative to make sure we know the MS status of every patient. We do it when a patient comes in the door, actually, at whether at adjuvant setting, let's say stage two or three, or in the advanced disease setting. There are studies, each of the, each a study, both an adjuvant and an advanced disease, a couple actually, looking at employing the checkpoint inhibitor in the upfront setting with chemotherapy. And those are things that I think are worth, worth considering seriously as a study uh, proposition. But clearly, patients with MSI high disease, they need, you have to make sure you get them an opportunity to take the MS, the treatment, the checkpoint inhibitor, because the effects can be so dramatic, you want to make sure you don't miss that chance. So we, we, use, we, we check MSI immediately, and we're ready to pounce at, at if patients have toxicity or complications from conventional therapy, we go immediately to the checkpoint inhibitor. Interestingly enough, most patients are not willing to, at least in our hands, are not willing to go on the, research, on the trials because they're wary about being randomized not to the checkpoint inhibitor and concerned about the ramifications of that rather than are having the flexibility of using it as we wish. So, 
In fact, the studies have had a little bit of trouble accruing, I think, because of that. I think in some diseases, tumor mutational burden may, may carry some weight. In colon cancer, uh, I'm not convinced that it really matters. It seems to, in my experience at least, and the way I look at it, you either have a, a, a sky-high tumor mutational burden, really like off the charts, or it, you don't respond to the checkpoint inhibitor. So I think intermediate load or you know, some, sort of, uh, some sort of continuum, I don't find that very useful. I may be proven wrong with more data or more if we can tweak the checkpoint inhibitors and get them to work in a different way. Perhaps I, I will get renewed interest in that. Right now, we do calculate the tumor mutational burden, but for colorectal cancer, I'm not sure that that's very helpful. It's either very high or I don't think patients get any benefit. That's at least where it stands today, I think.